Welcome to episode 7 of 60 Second Player Previews 2023. If you're unfamiliar with the series, please refer back to episode 1 for the full guide. Otherwise, let's get started. Number 31, James Vaness. Drafted with our second pick at pick number 31 in the 2022 draft, the big key defender promises to be a very solid player with his huge size and desirable assets. Van Ness was one of the best lockdown key defenders in his draft class and is also an underrated intercept marker. With Howard, Wilkie and Battle already locking down our key spots, and Adams and new recruit Zane Cordy also providing depth for the same positions, Van Ness is likely to find it hard to get a game early in the season. However, he has been seen training forward at times as well, which hints at a potential move forward to start his career amidst the current injuries at the Saints. This could be an education for his defensive craft to understand how AFL forwards move and will add some versatility to his game too. Ultimately, I believe James Van Ness will be eyeing a season of development in the VFL and potentially a late season debut if he can prove himself in either position. Number 32, Mason Wood. Wood has established himself as a much-loved and important member of the club both on-field and off-field, being awarded the Best Clubman Award in 2022. He played an important role as a defensive winger and was also able to play up forward and sporadically in the ruck, highlighting his versatility. At several points of the season, Wood showcased his X-Factor with creative goals. However, with Hill set to move on to the wing in 2023, Wood has been training with the midfielders, which hints at a potential move inside as a big bodied midfielder. It's a move that makes a lot of sense, as he is one of our best aerobic athletes and has the X Factor to play in the midfield and make a difference. With the forward line injury troubles, Wood could also be pushed forward to provide support. At the age of 29, Wood must cement himself in the team, otherwise, younger kids could begin being preferred. Number 33, Ben Patton. After a horrific leg injury wiped out his entire 2021 campaign, Patton was able to make a full recovery and play a role in the 2022 season. Although he looked a bit shaky and short of confidence in his body early in the season, to the point where he was dropped mid-season, he was almost back to his best by season's end. Patton was trialled in a couple of new roles in 2022, playing on the wing and even as a defensive forward at times, but it was clear that his natural place in the back pocket as a lockdown medium defender was when he was at his best. With a full pre-season to fully regain his confidence, which according to reports he's already doing, Patton will look to return to the form in 2020 that saw him become one of the best lockdown defenders in the league. He's also been training on the wing a little bit as well this preseason. Improving his ball use will also be a focus to boost his attacking threat and hopefully form a scary trio with Sinclair and Wanganine Millera. Number 34, Tom Highmore. It was a difficult 2022 season for Highmore as he only managed three games for the season. With Battle establishing himself as a crucial cog in the Saints' defence, Highmore found himself on the outer and was unable to crack in for a game without one of the key defenders going down. Although his intercept marking is too good to be at VFL level, his kicking often lets him down and can be a huge detriment to the side and himself. Focusing on simplifying his kicking and improving his strength in 1v1 contests could go a long way to helping him back to playing a consistent role at AFL level. A role change to the wing as a defensive winger, much like the role Mason Wood played in 2022, could provide the spark to accelerate Highmore's career as he has spent time there this preseason and even in match simulation. If he can leverage his intercept marking skills as that 7th defender from the wing, our defence could become rock solid. The only issue, once again, is that going forward, his kicking will have to be a lot better. So it has to be one of the primary focuses for him in 2023 to improve whether he is on the wing or not. With his contract expiring at the end of this year, it could be a career-defining season for Highmore. Number 35, Jack Sinclair. Our best and fairest winner had his best season to date, winning awards both at club level and at competition level. After spending 2021 learning his new halfback role and locking himself into the starting 22, 2022 was his year to explode and establish himself as the best halfback flanker in the competition. Ranking elite in disposals, meters gained, and intercept possessions, as well as above average for rebound 50s, Sinks was both a reliably elite attacker and defender. Clearly there aren't many weaknesses to his game, but improving his strengths will be a key focus for 2023. Hitting harder kicks on a more consistent basis, as well as accumulating the ball more and more consistently, will elevate his game even more. 
Sinks may also spend more time in the midfield this season to provide some added class and speed around stoppages and also enable the likes of Naziah, Stocker, Connolly, Webster, Patton, Caulfield, maybe even a fourth tall defender such as Highmore to patrol the halfback and back pocket lines. Learning to cope with tags will also be crucial as he was often limited quite heavily when given attention. Hill moving to the wing will leave him with even more attention in 2023, so he has to ensure that his performances aren't significantly affected by such factors. Nevertheless, 2023 is set to be another exciting season by our best and fairest. Thank you for watching episode 7 of 60 Second Player Previews for 2023. Make sure to drop a like on the video, comment your thoughts on the players that I've covered today, and make sure to also subscribe to the channel for future content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.